Hi, unconventionalists. Happy Thursday here from the tropics. Uh, if you guys are here joining me live, say hello at the chat box and I would love to hear from you. Uh, today's topic excites me and I'm sure it excites you as well because a lot of you here at the Unconventionalist uh, are currently working on uh, a side hustle, right? You're working on a business that can help you escape your cubicle, but also be creating and um, doing good work that you want to put out there. Um, the common value we all share here at The Unconventionalist is that we just don't want to create just any business, right? You don't want to create a job for yourself that you are going to end up hating, except you're the boss and things are just a lot riskier <laughs> financially for you. The whole point of you starting a business on your own, hopefully, it's not just about um, leaving your corporate job, but it's also about um, being able to enjoy your work, right? Being able to do work that pays you, but also work that doesn't feel, you know, that is is uh, hard to do and it's something that you don't want to do even if you've done it before. So a lot of you are in the stage, I know this because uh, you tell me this as well, uh, of really defining an idea for yourself and sometimes even when you've started a business at times uh, there are shifts that may need to happen uh, in your business in order for you to be in love with your business and like what you're putting out there and be having those creative juices flowing for you so that you're constantly growing and expanding uh, your work instead of just um, doing something, you know, sort of half-heartedly, right? So there's always going to be shifts in any stage of business you're in to start um, getting better at your work, but also defining even more clearly the message behind your work. Uh, but the beginning stage is always about picking a particular direction, right? So any multi-passionate people here that sort of have a hard time picking, I know I did, uh, and I still do at times when I make decisions in my business. Um, <clears throat> And a lot of times we do need to take a bit of a pause and sort of think about what is it that I want to do that I don't think I have to do, right? How can I make this job? Because now you are the creator of your own career, right? There's no more uh, job titles. There's no more resume stuff. There's no more your boss telling you what business to create, uh, you know, or um, what, how you should be defining your own job. You get to be that leader in your own life and in your career. So sometimes that freedom is amazing, but also sometimes it can be quite daunting uh, when you don't have, you know, these guidelines to follow and you sort of have to trust yourself uh, in defining what uh, works for you and what sorts of uh, what sort of business is um, going to be designed uh, for what you know how to do today. Um, so this is what we're talking about today, choosing the right business to start and learning what you want to do and how to take action uh, to get started to make sure that your idea is something that's thought about in a, in a clear manner. It's validated in a way that you feel good doing it, but also it's going to be profitable for you. Um, and it's not an overnight step, but it's definitely something that's going to get you rolling uh, from what we're going to be talking about today. And now this topic is also really relevant to uh, what I've been teaching and collaborating in in our community at the Academy of Cubicle Crashers. We started our uh, f first intake for the year uh, with some awesome people at the Academy and that is one of the first questions that most people had uh, as members of that community is, have I picked the right idea? Do I need to be uh, ready for this idea? How do I know when the right idea hits me in the face? You know, how do I know I've picked the right thing? You know, so this is an ongoing um, question that I think a lot of first time business owners and a lot of people that are in the beginning part of their journey of uh, learning what it is they can do to make a living uh, before they actually uh, do it, right? And you want to make sure that you are prepared for when you start to invest time uh, and money uh, and focus on your business. You want to know that you've done some work in the research, in the reflection piece for yourself in order to uh, feel confident, right? To pursue something and put your time, money, and effort uh, into it. Uh, this also leads us, this topic is such a big topic that I will be doing a video blog on this next week. So I would love to hear from you if you're listening to this live or um, you are going to comment on this after. So comment below this video to let me know your thoughts on it because I want to answer your questions. So when I create that video blog for next week that will, that will be released to you guys, I want to answer your questions. I want to make sure that you get what you want to say into it and I'm going to ans help you uh, get, uh, ask better questions of your uh, ideas. Uh, and so please comment below this video to let me know what you might want to learn uh, about starting the right business and finding your niche. So please uh, comment below this video. So 
when is the right time to really start a business? I mean, to be honest, I get this question a lot. Um, I believe that the waiting game is the biggest mistake that most people make and never do anything at all. Um, you know, a lot of us are waiting for when we get better at the thing that we think we're going to do. We have to upskill a ton of things. We have to take course after course after course to be ready, you know, in order to uh, put our work out there. Uh, we always sort of drag our feet around it. And instead of actually focusing on getting better, mastering the craft that you've decided for your business, uh, we get really caught up in the fear of hiding behind more learning, 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 and never doing. But it's actually in the doing, it's in the performing of just the capacity that you can give today that can help you get closer to actually being confident about the business that you really, really want to start. And here's the reality check. Very likely, any of us here, myself included, are not going to invent something that never, someone has never done before. We're not the next Elon Musk. We're not the next Steve Jobs that we have to, you know, hide ourselves in a garage for 10 years <laughs> like Steve Jobs did to come up with something that's never been invented in the planet. Very likely, your business idea, the thing, the gift that you want to share, there's going to be other people that's doing it out there, but no one out there in the entire planet is built like you. They don't have the life experience you've had. They don't have the same combination of skills. Uh, they don't have a perspective or an approach, you know, that's very unique to you. And that's the only thing, to be honest, that you're ever going to have uniqueness or a unique brand around is yourself, your life, your story, your brand, your personality, um, you know, the way that you articulate things to people. This will always be different than other people, your business type, the outcomes that potentially that you promise your clients may not be different, but how you get them there, the journey and that experience that you craft for your clients, that will always be different because there's literally no one on the planet just like you. So the better technique, instead of waiting for, um, you know, the perfect idea to hit you in the face, uh, waiting for getting good enough to do it because you're not going to get good enough until you do it anyway. So you might as well start now, uh, is really focusing on what I call the right for right now idea. And what is a right for right now idea? Right for right now ideas are things that are, uh, I can do today. I know how to do it. I've done it before. Potentially I've been paid to do it in the past or, I've solved it for myself in some way, living my life. I've gone through the pain. I've gone through the struggle. Uh, and now I can help someone to do that thing that I used to struggle with, right? Uh, a right for right now idea is also an idea that uh, leverages your strongest skills, right? Leverages your natural abilities to solve a problem. Um, and that may not be the idea that you die with uh, forever, you know, at the end of the day, but it will be the right idea currently to get you started. And you want to allow that idea idea to grow uh, and expand and get better for yourself in order to actually build a body of work that you can be proud of, you know, at the end of your days. I know that sounds really morbid, but really there's this sort of perfectionism piece that a lot of people struggle with, um, you know, that, that to be honest, Gives, keeps them being stuck from doing anything because they're waiting for this like Gandhi moment of where God talks to them and the stars are lined up and that feels good and that moment will never hit you. You know, you will have to start where you are at and then those little mini moments of recognition, acknowledgement and, um, you know, purpose will come to you when you're actually in the vicinity of that work rather than hiding behind, um, you know, learning and like, contemplating constantly of what business to start, right? Right for right now ideas is where you start. What you know how to do may not be even the most uh, perfect idea right now. You're like some things you don't like, some things you like, and you're going to grow from it when you actually start the idea uh, to begin with and that you work out on how you can improve to make things more creative for you, how you can show up a little bit more, um, uh, more in alignment with your values in your business. Um, and you're not going to know what those pieces of those components or ingredients of an ideal career or business is for you until you actually do something that is close, closer. It's one little answer that you get today about something you're drawn to do, uh, or feel called to do. And then letting that, <coughs> you know, curiosity of going towards that idea, um, you know, uh, trust that, that curiosity and actually Go forth and do it, and more clarity will, will come to you. Take a sip of my morning coffee. Um, so what do you do when you are in the space of um, not knowing what business to start? Well, <coughs> what we want to do to start is get the juices flowing, right? And this is what I do with my clients as well. A lot of us have been doing that in the academy. Taking our piece of paper, I love sticky notes, you know, take a blank wall uh, on a weekend, you know, get out some colored sticky notes and start to just write 
right? Bring up what it is that you're good at. And this could be a combination of things that is on your resume. You know, if you've done work in the past that has allowed you to be validated, you know, you've been paid to do it. Your colleagues say you're good at it. Your boss paid you for it. I mean, these are things you're good at. It's very logical. It's very um, validated. And you do list those things. And they may not be things to start that you would want to do again, but just give yourself a bit of time to reflect on that brain dump and sort of go, here's what I know to do. And I'm good at it. You know, I've been validated in some way. Uh, sometimes these sorts of uh, uh, talents and what you're good at is also not just part of your resume. It can be part of your life experience. Like, so let's say if you're a mom uh, that is just super kick-ass at making meals under 30 minutes, you know, or you are someone that's gone through tumultuous pain in your life in some way, in your health issues or stress or burnout, and you've gone through the sticky mud, you know, of transformation for yourself, you've gotten good at doing that thing because you've come up from the other side alive uh, and better as a human. That counts for knowing something that you're good at. So not everything is absolutely related to what you've done to be paid to do. Sometimes it can absolutely be related to just something you solved for yourself that is really valuable. It's a milestone in your life. It was a moment of significance in your life that you want to help someone else potentially do. Right? You're good at it. You've gone through it. Then what you want to do in the second stage of your brain dump and uh, getting your juices flowing stage is then you want to look at that list or those sticky note list of things and start to isolate the things that you actually like doing. Right? Some things you may have been paid to do. You're like, I can do accounting. You know, I can do this thing, but I don't want to do it anymore. It's just like, I can do it, I'm trained to do it, I went to school for it. It just doesn't really make my heart sing. And that's where you have to be real honest with yourself. Um, it's not about what you can do, it's about what you want to do. So if you're going to reinvent your career and start to create this new job for yourself, you want to be honest about what uh, you want to eliminate from your tool belt of skills. Because just because you can't do it doesn't mean you should. Okay, so this is a very intuitive, uh, honest place that you need to start going into and be... Um, Really, really, really genuinely honest about what you refuse to do again. Uh, or, you know, it, it might be something that you've been paid to do for 20 years, but you no longer want to do that anymore. Uh, and I think that is something uh, of honesty that you do need, especially if you want to uh, be going towards a path of a meaningful way of working. And then when you isolate a little bit of a shorter list on what you're good at, what you actually like doing, you know, and you have a shorter list of what that looks like, then you can start thinking about, you know, what can I solve in terms of problems with these skills and strengths and things that I know how to do? What is the bigger meaning behind the thing that I'm doing? You know, so for example, if you do want to continue to help people, um, let's say if you, have a, you have a lawyer background, you're like, you know, something about justice. There's something about fairness. There's something about helping people um, receive, you know, uh, something fair in their lives, you know, uh, that could be a theme that you can really think about. That's something that I want to continue to have in my career that is really, really meaningful for me. Um, you can also really think about like, you know, how do these, uh, you know, putting your skill sets aside in that isolated list we talked about, you start actually coming from a different place and sort of thinking about problems in the world that you want to contribute to. So a lot of us uh, are frustrated at many things that happen in our lives. Something sometimes it's about, you know, something's happening in the world, like the Me Too campaigns, you know, women's rights. Uh, it could be about leadership. Uh, it could be about uh, more uh, people of color that should be uh, their voice to be heard a lot more. Whatever the causes are that are near and dear to your heart, this is an important piece to recognize because potentially what could be purposeful for you to start in a business has to align with some of this um, this piece of purposeful contribution, right? So it may not be that you become, you know, you, you have a full-time career on being an, an advocate for women's rights, but what could be important for you to realize is that your business has to help women and your business has to help more women's voices be heard, whether they're business owners, authors, speakers, you know, uh, people that advocate a particular cause you want to align yourself with, you are going to help them get that voice heard. You're going to help them get their message across. And then you can look at your isolated skill sets and go, which of those skill sets can help me do the thing to help more people do more things, right? So, when you are uh, more clear about problems that you may want to solve in the world, causes, themes of purpose that you want to contribute to, then you can start to look at, these are the tools that I have, right? I've got marketing skills, I've got writing skills, I've got, I'm really good at helping people articulate their thoughts, whatever it may be, those sorts of skill sets, tangible and intangible. You can utilize them as tools in order to build a business to help people do that thing. The skills are not as important as the why. 
you know, the why is more important. That's the GPS. That's the heartbeat of your business or what you are willing to do with your work. And the tools are just things that you pull, you know, a hammer, a wrench, a screwdriver, whenever you think it's going to be helpful in order to get people from A to B. Right? By knowing the problems you want to solve, knowing causes that you care about, knowing bigger themes around uh, what's meaningful for you to contribute to is a lot more um, easier for you to look at and also more meaningful for you to look at when you think about what sorts of business I can start based on those components. Right, The skills, you're going to gather more skills along the way. You're going to have a, a lifetime you know, of options to merge and shift businesses or have multiple businesses even, but your why will not change as much. You know, There's certain things you're drawn to help with. There's certain things that are uh, really, really, really meaningful for you to contribute to. Right, That's a bigger question to ask yourself rather than what should I do with these skill sets, you know, because it can be repurposed in many, many different uh, directions. Okay. When you get to, you know, this intersection, right, of skills that you can bring to the table, interests and passions that you're willing to sort of lay your body down for, right, and then the third piece of what problems are happening in the world that people want to get solved, what people are actively looking to get solved, you then got a bigger uh, piece of these ingredients, right? You, you understand these three components that can allow you to then go to the next step of brainstorming what business it is that you can start that can actually activate these three components for you, right? And this is, again, a very playful place, right? You get out another whack of sticky notes or another piece of paper, you sort of go, how can I combine all three areas? What can I come up with creatively and, and stretch that creative muscle that I have to come up with ideas of what I think I can do that solves a problem that people need, but it's actually an, a, a topic of interest that I like. I can see myself researching about it. I can see myself immersed in it. I would do it for free, right? That's when you get to ideas that are very meaningful, but also are validated in terms of value, that people are seeking for this sort of support and help, okay? Um, when you get to that point of, you know, brainstorming different business ideas, sometimes it's about also validation of making sure that you're talking to the right people that you think you want to help and getting their view on whether or not this idea that you have, this contribution that you want to make, uh, this experience that you want to craft in your business, uh, is it something that jives well with other humans that are potentially uh, 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 the right profile of an ideal fit for a customer for you. So that validation and testing phase of interviewing people, talking to real humans, people skip the stage all the time. Um, they just do it on their own without, you know, getting uh, uh, insight from other humans. Start to actually talk to your community. Pull a woman out that fits the, the profile of a woman you want to help and start to go, can I take you out for coffee and pick your brain on what you're struggling with? Maybe you're writing your first book, you're struggling with that. I think I can help with that. Let's talk about the problems that you have. What keeps you up at night? Um, what are you struggling with that you think you would love to get some mentorship or guidance around um, and give them your time? So I like doing a little, a little bit of a 30 for 30 approach, right? 30 minutes, I get to pick your brain on your problem, uh, a bit of market research, a bit of case study. Um, and also you then get 30 minutes of my time and I'm going to help you in my best of my ability. And that's great practice for you anyway to start helping people. In order to know what to start, what's valuable, what's going to work for you, if you're going to even enjoy the work, is really to start helping people right now. Not when your website is started, not when you think your YouTube channel looks great. It's really just actually get organic and start helping people. That's what the business is all about. A business is created to solve problems. A business is there to help. That's why people pay for you. Uh, so start helping for free even to start. And you're going to get so much back from those conversations, those interviews, that market research, that's really going to help you get to um, knowing what to create in your business that actually is validated by other humans that have said, I want that. If you can create something like that for me that can get me from A to B, I would buy that. And that takes a real organic conversation, a few people, you know, to start with instead of actually um, getting busy with trying to create a great brand or an excellent website. That is not going to actually lead you to starting a business. It's really just pretty things, cosmetic things, aesthetics, shiny objects that are actually distracting you from being good at the work that you want to do, right? I always say, stop trying to look good in your business and start being good uh, in your business. So test the damn thing, right? Start talking to people, start putting your ideas out there, start um, starting where you are. You know, don't wait until you think you have, have mastery completely in what you think you want to do and actually just showcasing that in bite-sized ways so that you can be in the vicinity of that work and start practicing, right? 
um, sharing actually your advice and your uh, information ahead of time before you even have your assets in your business ready. Okay, hope that was helpful for you to sort of thinking about what sort of business is meant for you. Not every business out there is meant for you. So the best thing to do is stop looking at everybody else and start getting real clear about what you need to be doing. So if you follow the steps that I've been talking about in this video, um, let me know what that brought you to realize. Let me know what your brain dump looks like. What, let me know what sorts of ideas uh, hit the components of those ingredients of those three part pieces, your skills, your interests and problems that you want to solve, uh, that you want to explore. And the more you share these ideas with other people, the more you're going to feel that it's real, the more that you feel that you have support and accountability for it. And this is what this group is all about, right? Sharing ideas, sharing feedback about our own journeys to get there. Um, so I would love to hear from you. Um, where if you did try out some of the techniques that I talked about today in this video, um, what did it bring you to realize? What ideas are meant for you based on what you're designed to do today in your skills, the things you're passionate about, and problems that you see that you want to contribute to solve. I would love to hear from you, so comment under this video. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I am going to be filming a video blog next week that I want to encompass all the things that we've learned as a group in the Academy of Cubicle Crashers during our first week together. I'm going to be sharing some case studies of how certain people have done things to get them to an idea, what we've been discussing in our academy. But I also want to know your questions so that I can incorporate that into the video blog. So don't forget to also comment. What is your big urgent question, your big burning question on um, what you're struggling with when it comes to defining your niche and also defining what's the right type of business for you to start. Okay, thanks so much for joining me and I'm so glad uh, we got to talk this out today uh, and the conversation doesn't end here. So please let me know what you're struggling with, what you would love for me to teach you in order for uh, it to make it easier for you to get to your business idea uh, and I would love to include your questions in our video blog next week. Okay, until then, I will see you later and have an amazing day and uh, thank you for being a part of this community and helping each other out and um, sharing all your great ideas with us here uh, and executing on um, creating a better version of your life and your career. See you next week. Bye.